so in reproductive system first we will see about male reproductive system okay so in the male reproductive system what are all the organs involved so basically the structural organization you will categorize into external reproductive organs and internal organs so the external organs includes penis and scrotum internal organ includes the gonads and other accessory glands and the ducts okay so with respect to the physiological anatomy of the reproductive structures you have the scrotum connected to the penis okay inside the scrotum you have the gonads where you call it as testis okay and then if you do the cross section of the testis you will get the structure which is going to now do the formation of spermatozoa you have the tubal like structures which you call as seminiferous tubules okay so all the seminiferous tubules is connected together and that region is called as reta testis and from the reta testis it will again ascend upwards and come downwards that is the part which you call as epididymis and from the epididymis you will get a long tubular structure that is the vas deferens which takes the secretions of the seminiferous tubules and give it to the seminal vesicles where the secretions of the seminiferous tubules is stored until the stimulus is needed the spermatozoa is stored and in the se seminal vesicle the spermatozoa whatever is formed will mix with the contents of the seminal vesicle and during ejaculation of the semen the seminal vesicle contents and adjacent you have the prostatic gland so it will also include the secretions of the prostate gland and all together when it is ejected through the opening of the penis you will call it as semen so semen what are all the contents which is present in the semen so the semen contains spermatozoa seminal vesicular contents and the secretions from the prostate gland okay clear so now we will see spermatogenesis what is spermatogenesis
Spermatogenesis is the process of formation and the development of sperms in the seminiferous tubules. So for this, <coughs> consider this as the basement membrane. Okay, so the basement membrane contains the cells which you call as spermatogonium. So initially, you have the spermatogonia which is very big in its size. And then you have spermatocytes, that is primary spermatocytes. And this primary spermatocytes will further give the divisions, that is secondary spermatocytes. From the secondary spermatocytes, you will get the spermatids. This spermatids will get now gain the motile structure and you will get that as a mature spermatozoa okay so this is spermatogonium primary spermatocyte secondary spermatocyte spermatids and spermato Zoa. Okay, so if you see the divisional representation, spermatogonium, then you are getting primary spermatocytes. In the spermatogonium, you have 46 chromosomes and this is undergoing the division mitosis okay and here also you have the same diploid nature and then this primary spermatocyte now undergoing first meiotic division once when the meiosis is taking place you will have haploid nature okay so the 2n now becomes n and that results in the formation of secondary spermatozoites and again second meiotic division so that gives you spermatids which is also haploid and finally maturation occurs resulting in motile spermatozoa so this is how the spermatogenesis is happening and in order for the spermatogenesis to happen in a successful manner in the sense, whatever spermatozoa is formed, it should be having the fertile capacity. It should be normal. Okay. So, for those, we need the factors, which is regulating spermatogenesis. What are all the hormones? Mainly the factors here we are going to talk is about the hormones. First and foremost is the gonadotropic hormone FSH and LH. And second one is prolactin. Then testosterone, thyroid hormone and also insulin which is one of the content which is present in the semen, estrogen and growth hormone at last inhibin. Okay, clear? Yes, so this is how the spermatogenesis is taking place. And now moving on into the other controlling mechanisms 
that is hormonal regulation for spermatogenesis how the hormonal regulation is involved in regulating the spermatogenesis first you will get the stimulus from the hypothalamus resulting in the release of gonadotropin releasing hormone to the anterior pituitary gland so now the anterior pituitary gland releases what are the two hormones from the anterior pituitary gland lh and fsh this is follicular stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone in the male reproductive system the seminiferous tubules surrounded by the cells we have the sertoli cells and leydig cells this leydig cells plays a major role in the synthesis of a male hormone testosterone and sertoli cells plays a major role in the nourishment of the leydig cells and the seminiferous tubules in the sense it gives a supportive mechanism to the cells of the gonads in the male reproductive system so this luteinizing hormone where it is going to act is on the leydig cells so the place which is releasing the uh, synthesizing the testosterone is leydig cells the testosterone is synthesized in the presence of luteinizing hormone and the other hand this follicular stimulating hormone it is acting on the seminiferous tubules and what is the substance you are getting from the seminiferous tubules spermatozoa and the testosterone is also one of the factor along with the follicular stimulating hormone it will stimulate the seminiferous tubules if you have decrease in the testosterone level then the sperm count will be decreased or the spermatozoa which is been synthesized may not be in a completely matured state okay so these are the hormonal regulations in the spermatogenesis and then you have other regulatory mechanisms mainly temperature regulation which has to be maintained for the production of spermatogenesis where is the gonads present in the male reproductive system inside the scrotum the scrotum is made up of a muscle called as dorsus muscle okay so consider this as the scrotum and inside you have the testis always in the in the fetal state the scrotum is present in the abdominal cavity okay and before the birth the scrotum is descending down from the abdominal cavity into the pelvic region yes or no why this is happening is because in order to maintain the scrotal temperature less than the body temperature how much minus 4 degrees from the normal body temperature that is 32 degrees celsius this is the temperature which is required for the spermatozoa synthesis okay clear and this daughter's muscle will contract and relax according to the atmospheric temperature and it will maintain the temperature balance within the testis to give the normal spermatozoa production so this is the most important thing which you have to consider for example if a person from 
high temperature zone coming and complaining of infertility the sperm count is normal everything is normal and the person is normal but still they don't have the fertility function the reason might be the atmospheric temperature so this atmospheric temperature may cause alteration in the spermatogenesis mechanism if the temperature is more than 32 degrees celsius either the sperm count will be less or the sperm might not be matured or the sperm which is formed may not be in a motile nature okay so you have to consider the region from where the person is okay clear so this is how the temperature balance is playing a major role and we will see the structure of mature sperm now so sperm consists of what are the structures present in the sperm head then and you mid piece and a long tail okay so this head contains a cap like covering called as a chromosome and in the center you have nucleus the entire structure you call has head mid piece and the tail what is the significance of acrosome what is present in this acrosome what enzyme is present in this acrosome hyaluronidase okay this hyaluronidase is the enzyme which is present in the acrosome which helps in the digestion of the outermost layer of the egg so when the head hits the egg this acrosomal enzyme hyaluronidase will dissolve the outermost layer of the egg and then makes the sperm to enter into the ovum okay then the process of fertilization happens so that is the main significance in this sperm and now the spermatozoa after reaching the seminal vesicle whatever it is ejaculated is called as semen so semen what is the nature of the semen milky white appearance mainly due to the secretions of prostate gland the milky white nature of the semen is not because of only spermatozoa it is also having the secretions of the prostate gland okay and the volume please stop talking the volume of semen which is ejaculated is usually 2.5 to 3.5 ml per ejaculation if there is decrease in the volume the person will encounter infertility okay clear and then now coming to the other compositions apart from the prostatic gland secretions we have seen already it constitutes 10 percentage of the sperm and fluids from the vas deferens and 60 percentage from the seminal vesicle and 20 percentage from the prostatic gland okay clear and sperm count what is the normal sperm count to get the fertile function what is the normal sperm count Forty two hundred million per ml of 
semen. How much is the volume which is ejaculated per ml? 2.5 to 3.5 ml. In that, we need 40 to 100 millions of sperms per ml to get the normal fertile function. Okay. If the sperm count is less than 40 millions, you term it as oligospermia. If there is total absence of sperm, azospermia. Okay, clear? So up to this, male reproductive system is getting over.